Hello again, I want to continue our solutions notes and I want to hit some water vocabulary that you may or may not have heard in the past. The first vocab term that I want to think about is a hydrate. A hydrate is a crystal that contains water as shown in this figure to the right. Copper sulfate pentahydrate is the example shown here. Water of hydration is water that is attached or inside of the crystal. And the example in this case are those five water molecules that are locked inside this crystal of copper sulfate. Another term that I want you to know is effluorescence, and that's the losing of water hydration to the air. The crystal's internal water vapor pressure is larger than that of the external water vapor pressure. And so effluorescence can happen. Here are some examples of effluorescence where the copper sulfate loses the five water molecules that are kind of trapped in it. And this is also evident if you look at a brick building and you see those white salts on a brick wall and they come to the surface when the brick undergoes ethyl fluorescence. Diliquescence is the gaining of water from the air. The crystal's eternal water pressure in this case is lower than that of the external water vapor pressure. Some examples, some common things that we often use are silica packs and um, calcium chloride beads. Both of these are found when you buy shoes or handbags or anything of that nature to keep moisture from building up inside them. Hydroscopic is the gaining of water hydration from the air, but it does from a subst but the substance does not dissolve. So for example, hair, decorating, decorating paper, rice in a salt shaker, crackers in a sugar bowl. So in this case, the substance gains water but doesn't dissolve. So you can make something called a hair gerometer. And in this hair gerometer, um, anybody that has natural curly hair notices that when it's more humid, the hair tends to curl up and that would make this hair gerometer work and you will be able to see how the hair will frizz up or curl up the more humid it is. Anhydrous is no water at all in the crystal. Some examples of anhydrous is anhydrous ammonia, calcium chloride beads. Here is an example that you can see of the copper sulfate before and after by heating it to drive off the water. This is what it looks like with the water. You've got the pretty blue and then after it has that white chalky appearance. Um, and you recall that we use anhydrous ammonia to fertilize fields. Solubility tells us how much solute can dissolve in a solvent at a particular temperature and pressure to make a saturated solution. So some more vocab that we need to talk about are a saturated solution. This is where the solution cannot hold any more solute. The sol solute may be sitting at the bottom of a container. If you've ever tried to sweeten unsweetened iced tea that's cold and you've poured sugar in and it's not quite sweet enough and you keep pouring sugar and eventually the sugar starts piling up at the bottom of your tea glass, that is because the 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 cold iced tea solution is saturated. Unsaturated is where the solution can dissolve more. You've put some sugar in the tea, for example, but it can still hold more. That would be an unsaturated solution. A super saturated solution is what happens when we make iced tea and we boil the tea and we get the sugar um, to go inside the tea, more sugar than you would get if it's a cold tea. Okay, if you messed with the solution by shaking it or throwing it one more crystal, the whole thing would crystallize rapidly. Supersaturated solutions are very neat and you should check out the video um, that I've put on the chemistry link to show you an example of this. I usually do a demo to show how this uh, can happen and how this solution can quickly crystallize. Okay, so here again are my options. We have a situation where we have 
an unsaturated solution where it's still dissolving. Five has still dissolved in the solution, but it's still dissolving. Here we have a saturated solution. It's a dynamic equilibrium. The amount um, precipitating out and the amount dissolving is equal to one another. Here we have an unsaturated solution. Everything's dissolved. Notice the temperature increase. We've cooled it down slowly. This is how we make a supersaturated solution. We would add this and then cool it down slowly. And in this case, we have no precipitate yet, but as it's cooling, or as it gets agitated, we start to quickly see the precipitate form. So here are some pictures of a supersaturated solution. As I pour it and agitate it, you can actually see it crystallizing before your eyes. Again, I want you to take a look at that saturated solution video that I've added to the chemistry playlist. And then finally, I want you to know the terms miscible, where two liquids can dissolve in each other, and immiscible, where liquids do not dissolve. So alcohol and water are very miscible. If you put rubbing alcohol and water, they will dissolve in one another. Immiscible would be oil and water. They are, do not dissolve in each other. Thank you, and have a good day.